Hi guys, need some help finishing up your part one of your project? Here are some suggestions. So for question 12, okay, all you have to do is go back into your tables and just rewrite what you wrote for the profit after 10 years. Okay, so go to the savings table, then go to the mutual fund table and write what your profit was after 10 years. And that's in the table. So see where it says profit? Whatever the answer was, that's all you have to put there. That's it. Then the mutual fund profit is going to be a lot more than the savings because the savings rate was much, much lower, meaning that you're just finding how much more did you make. So you can just subtract these two numbers to find out how much more you made in the mutual fund than in the savings. And then answer question D. Why do you think that is? Now for question 13, we did this in class together. Okay, so just look at your notes. You should have all the work in here. And it says, if you invest your money in the mutual fund from your table, how many years will it take for your $15,000 investment that came from the long lost uncle to grow to $25,500? <laughs> They're asking how many years. So the unknown is time. It's the years. So I filled this all in and I solved here. Now, question 14, you're just finding the rate from the CD account. So just go on up to your savings table. Okay, sorry, from the savings so look at savings. What was the rate? See how it says rate right here? Whatever percentage you have here, that's what you're writing in question 14. Okay? Then rate for mutual fund. Go to your mutual fund. This is the interest rate. So whatever rate you have here, okay, you're going to put that here. That's your mutual fund rate. Notice that it's a lot higher, right? That's why you make so much more money in the mutual fund than in the savings account. If you didn't do this, use my numbers. Okay, for question 15, it says, in how many years will your initial savings double? It's exactly like what we did in question 13 because they're asking how many years. So they're asking for time, meaning we're going to set it up the same way. So 15 and 16, you're doing the exact same thing. So here is what we would do. In how many years will my savings double? Okay, so I'm looking at my savings account first. And now I'm figuring out how long, how many years, so T is unknown, that my savings will double. All right, so I know the equation looks like this because it's exponential growth. And so I'm just writing all of the variables down here. Y is the total at the end. How much money do I want to have? Well, if I start, principal, if I started with $15,000, so that's my principal. If it's going to double, how much would I end up with? Well, if I take 15,000 and times it by two, that's what double means, it equals to $30,000. So that's how much money I want to have at the end. That's my Y. And the rate is whatever your savings rate is, because we're finding savings. So I'm looking at my savings rate. So it's 0.13%, and then I divide that by 100, and I get 0.0013. Okay, now I put it in the equation. Y is, not Y, I know what Y is. So 30,000 equals 15,000 times 1 plus 0.0013 to the T power. So I just literally plugged in for every single variable that I have. And now I'm going to solve this. So this is what we practice in class together. Okay. First thing I want to do is just simplify. So I just simplify that. Everything else comes down. And I can add that together. And when I do, I just get 1.0013. Remember that your numbers are going to be different because you have a different rate, but it'll be the same idea. Now, I want to get the exponent and the base by itself. Here's my exponent. Here's my base. So I think on this side of the equation, sorry, <coughs> what do I have to get rid of? What's not highlighted? The 15,000. So since it's being multiplied, the opposite of multiplication is division. You don't think about the other side of the equation you only think about how do I get rid of that. Then whatever I write on one side, I write on the other.
I simplify. And why does it make sense that I have a 2 here? Well, remember we talked about doubling, okay? Well, that's where that 2 is coming from, because it's doubling. Next step, I have to rewrite it in log form. So now I rewrite in log form. And the first thing I did was I isolated the exponent and base. That was step one. This is step two. So I write log. What's the base? This is the base. And this is the base. So log base 1.0013 of 2 equals t. Okay, and that's what I do in the second step. And now I can just put it in the calculator. So my third step is to write it in the calculator. And so I put log 2 divided by log 1.0013. And after I put that in the calculator, and remember I'm always using my Desmos calculator. Okay, I downloaded the free Desmos app. So that way I don't have to use my iPhone calculator, which is not good. And that equals t. And so t, the time, is equal to 533.5 years. So this is the time. So it's going to take 533.5 years for my savings to double. Take a second and think, is that realistic? Is it possible that I can wait that long? No. So in a savings account, your money is never going to grow that fast. It's never going to grow to that much money. Because 533 years, I can't wait that long. Now let's do the same thing, but with our mutual fund. So the only thing that's going to change is that this number now is not going to be 0 0.13. It's going to be the mutual fund rate. So this is going to be 7.5% divided by 100 equals 0 0.075. And that's the number that goes here. Everything else will be the same, and you solve it the same. And that's how you're going to do question 16. After you do 15 and 16, then all you have to do is answer question 17, comparing them and thinking why did it, which one took uh, longer to double, and why do you think that is? Why does that make sense? Think about the rates of each one. Then, you already did this in class. Make sure you answered each of these in full sentences. If you didn't do it in class, just click on the link, follow what it says, and figure out how long will it take for you to be a millionaire. This is the part that's worth the most. So each bullet, make sure to give really good answers explaining, okay, what did you learn from everything we did in this part of the project? This is going to be worth the most part, so make sure you answer it well. Good luck. If you have questions, I have tutoring today.